There is lies, damn lies, and statistics. To some extent, it is uh, applicable to technical analysis as well, because, you know, sometimes it's awfully wrong. But on average, I would say, it shows that uh, actually there are some patterns, there are things which we can base on uh, from the just the price action and it proves to be correct um, a lot of times many times through the whole history not only Bitcoin but like overall markets uh, but including Bitcoin through even this 10 only 10 years of its history and we can't ex exclude exclude that um, powerful tool from our analysis from our predictions and the way we look at the market so today there will be no news guys in the episode We'll talk only about technical analysis and um, namely we will talk about one of two indicators of the price which in my opinion uh, both of them sort of can um, show can spot the most uh, the biggest bottoms uh, the highest <laughs> sorry, the highest peaks and the lowest bottoms of the price of Bitcoin at least they showed that so far during the whole history of Bitcoin. And the second one is even more interesting, but uh, we will talk about it later, like keep it for the dessert um, in the later videos, uh, because it actually it, it is made for Bitcoin. It is it's very interesting. And the first one we'll talk about uh, first one today. And actually just few few, few videos ago, we were talking about this um, other indicator which is called historical volatility basically it is showing how the price um, changes how the how the volatility of the price is uh, with respect to previous period of time and for example here the volatility was very low so we were aware of some strong change in the price to happen very soon and it did and also it spots the uh, um, highs and lows by those outrageous 100% uh, periods, 100% values, even the uh, point at 2015th when we had this very high uh, value and also the bottom of the market. So, but today we will talk about the different um, uh, indicator, although this one is very interesting, but we'll talk about one which is called um, stochastic oscillator. Here it is. And for those for those of you who don't know what is that, it basically shows the uh, position of the current price with respect to some range of the prices of the price before for the previous period of time, and it is um, in percents, so it's from zero to hundred. And when we have it, for example, at the very high value at hundred percent. It usually means that we are at very um, overbought territory and it's very likely that we'll go down from that. And on, this, on the other hand, if we're very low, then it's likely that we will uh, move to the upside and this usually happens with the price for like, like for example, like here. So why I think that it's really um, strong, like very um, nicely um, shows the bottoms through the whole history. In fact, those kinds of indicators are very, well, became better and better the wider, the longer period of time you looked at. So this is daily chart now. And if you switch to weekly chart, and by the way, this is a bright, brave new coin here. So it's sort of an average of the uh, price of Bitcoin uh, over, the, over many exchanges. Well, you can pick some other like uh, what it is, the bit uh, the Bitrex probably, right? So you can have the uh, long history as well, but just BLX works well as well. So let's look at the weekly chart. And what you can see here that here is was the bottom, for example, in 2011. Of course, this, this period is pretty much, um, how to say, you wouldn't be really considering it because it is not so many exchanges, low volume, etc. but still, so uh, bottom, low, then it traces a lot of the local uh, highs and local lows. One, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven. So this is the maximum. All basically all major lows and highs were, were tracked. And here is another one. So we have the, the highest point in November 13th. Uh, and it was pretty at the 100%. And then we had the, the drop. And eventually we have lower and lower lows. If you will if you'll zoom in, you'll see that we have lower highs and lower lows, which basically indicates the average is going down. And here again, that was the bear market, exactly the period of bear market. So then we, when we had this uh, very bottom at, November, at the January 15, on January 15, in January 15th, we had this very bottom, um, well, this is actually was even lower, but still we have this bottom uh, on the bigger time scale here and somewhere around this area we started to change the trend in fact if you look at that then in september that was already like quite quite low here so we get, may, had a correction then dropped again so still that was that was a sort of uh, change of the trend from bur bullish to bearish around here like this and basically that we would we, so we saw in uh, our oscillator so it changes the trend we see higher lows higher highs and now we are going up and up and up if you will track the high the the peaks uh, bottoms and highs and lows here you will see that they are basically follow the peaks of the price around here so it it's also a nice indicator of the local lows and local highs then eventually what you what you can see is that the price is going up 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 and again it traces nearly every each each and every one among the highs and lows of the price but more importantly it actually has um, higher uh, higher highs every time well on average still you can see like this this is how it how it goes and the higher lows as well so it indicates that the trend is upwards and then eventually at the peak of the of 2017 in December it's suddenly changed this trend so there's no more higher highs there's lower low even in January already huge low that basically um, stops the all the previous trend changes 180 degrees and now we're forming lower lows and uh, lower highs sorry and lower lows but now what are you just this is this the sweetest part what you see now is that uh, in June uh, 18th there was the most like the lowest point here and then the December 18th so we basically have it bottoming during this period of time it's, of course it's not it doesn't mean that the June 18th was the lowest it was just the strongest um, move I would say but still this is the trend here and now even recently we have this you can you can, you can even draw a line here I, I'm sure something like like this maybe like this it's still a bit inclined upwards so well it depends you can you can pick either uh, average stock or um, stochastic or you can uh, play uh, play with the plain one but still uh, you can see that this is slightly changes the trend and now when we have this um, recent two uh, lows this one is already be becoming fl more flat right and it seemed like it is about to make a, a low here and go up it's not necessarily it will do until we will not see the higher high here it's really hard hard to say everything anything but it's sort of like alluding us guys something interesting started to happen moreover when you look at all of that even in high on higher time frames switch to from weekly to monthly okay so we're switching to monthly chart and what do we see it's actually has even better even even um, like smoother indication so this was the bottom you see it's perfectly spotted the bottom here it was the top it it's at the maximum at the top almost like it's even like even predicts the, the top here and now if we look at the 
lowest uh, point here it's it's now right at the 2015th it was nine percent now we're at 2.5 percent it's the lowest point ever so moreover it's actually again started to sort of slow it slowing down so indeed it's not really clear whether we will not go to like zero it could be really like zero point something um, but it's just the probability of that to happen is really really low um, I must say that a lot of people are looking not at the stochastic oscillator but stochastic RSI and the difference is uh, that in stochastic RSI this uh, it, it traces tracks the um, behavior of RSI not the behavior of the price in fact uh, many people are preferring this because it sort of includes more data um, but this is not 100% clear actually and in my personal opinion again if you'll track the the peaks all over the history you will see that stochastic RSI also it predicts the uh, bo well predicts indicates the tops and bottoms pretty well but in my opinion it doesn't you see it has much more noise here like oscillating much uh, more uh, with bigger intensity but uh, the stochastic pure stochastic has obvious trend to, uh, to the upside obvious trend to the downside here we don't have that and um, looking at the stochastic RSI some people especially on the weekly chart you can see that they say okay we can drop again so we, we we are going down we can drop again to the lower low and it's we can stay there like forever also so it's it's a lot of room to fall but first this indicates that actually the since, since it's tracking RSI RSI is momentum of the price this indicates that bears actually um, lost some of their uh, energy already and uh, we are sort of in not already not not in the bearish ter territory so um, not clear whether we'll go really to the lowest low it's absolutely not um, guaranteed so in any case the fact that this doesn't reflect the price behavior uh, in the same way like this pretty uh, smooth way as um, as, our, as stochastic itself I don't think that stochastic RSI is better but of course we need to look at a lot of the data to make our conclusion so that is basically the point and when you look at the monthly chart right now together with all of the things which we just mentioned you can see actually that February is basically um, at the <laughs> very very tiny uh, green candle right now so we are sort of having an attempt to go higher so we'll see of course but uh, already like we we started to change this trend moreover if we look at the price itself then on the weekly chart 200 days moving average as we already talked uh, we didn't go below that moving average yet we did test it here but we didn't even try to test it yet we may try it but the fact that we th this this level is strong enough to e not even to let uh, the price to approach it means a lot and another thing that if we actually look look at the total capitalization of the of the coins all the cryptocurrencies then we will see that we are below this 200 weekly moving average and we were below here as well but the point is that really bearish signal would be if we went below if we would went would go below and go like very low and stay there right now the, we are just um, hovering around and this means that it's it's really not in the favor of, of bears because the trend was bearish so we are sort of thinking of change it um, what I want to say guys is that don't think that this is some kind of the um, ultimate or universal solution to all of the problems we have 
and that now we are ready to go up and we are sort of sort of on b before the uh, new bull run tomorrow no not really we may have a lot of the bumps on the way there but the fact is that with like more than 75 percent of the traders investors are expecting the new low they all may be really really wrong and you see just on the technicals it is really possible to happen okay i hope that you learned something interesting something useful uh, and if yes please continue to uh, follow the new episodes we'll talk about the second indicator which in my personal opinion is even more interesting like not even more interesting it's like one order better in my opinion than the stock indicator um, stochastic that uh, very very um, much of the hope giving a lot of the hope of, of to the bulls in my opinion right now as well okay that is it for today thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next videos goodbye guys